Well, things are looking pretty good here. I've got two stars on the first six days. A little picture seems to be emerging here. I don't know what it is. Maybe this is the ocean floor. Is there a sleigh? Is there keys? Let's look at number six. This is interesting because it deals with really large numbers of fish. Uh, reproducing fish. It's a little bit like uh, Conway's Game of Life, except the fish never die. At least they don't die in the time frame we're working with here in some days. Um, you should probably read this to get the rules. We start with fish having these number of days left before they reproduce. And then this shows what happens after 18 days given this starting point. And in my first version of this program for part one, I created one object for every fish. But then when we got into billions of fish, it was just too slow. So then the problem forced me to think about understanding patterns in the problem. And I realized that we only need one fish group object for each of the values for days remaining until spawning. Um, so if you have, for instance, a hundred fish with three days left, then it'll be two days left, one day's left, zero days left, and then those a hundred fish will spawn a hundred more fish and then reset back to six. And since all the instances of the fish that have the same value here act in the same way, why don't we group them and we'll operate on their groups. So that's the approach I was forced to take. And boy, does it run faster. Um, let's run with the real data for the full 256 days, just so you can see the speed of this. There I ran it and it's done and this this is the answer right here. That's how many fish there are after 256 days. Quite a lot. What is that? Trillions? One and a half trillions? 1.6 trillion? That's a lot of fish. Uh, there's still a bug in the program because look, there are 258 groups. There should never be more than uh, groups to represent the numbers 0 through 8. So somehow I've got a bug in here, but before I had these groups, I would have had 1.6 trillion of these fish objects and uh, iterate all through all those and see who wants to, you know, decrement them all and see which ones are going to spawn. Um, before I did this grouping thing, I ran the program and let it run for 10 or 15 minutes and it just was doing like, it was taking a minute or two just to go to the next, next day. Um, well, let's look at the code. Uh, why don't we start by just collapsing some things until we want to look at them. And we load the data here using read text from path. Strip off any, any uh, trailing white space and then split on commas. And that gives us the data. Here's what the Number six test data looks like. So starting days until spawns is just a list of with the test data, these five numbers. All right, what does solve do? It starts by creating a fish population, giving it this list of numbers, the three, four, three, one, two. And then a loop for one, one for each day, and we call fish population update. Let's look at fish population now. Fish population, well, you might normally think it consists of zero or more fish, but since we've grouped the fish, it consists of zero or more 
fish cycle groups. So maybe we'll start with the fish cycle group. And this is all fish at the same point in the days until spawn cycle. It's all the fish with the same value for days until spawn. And then this num members is how many fish there are in this group. The update method implements the logic for indicating that a spawn is needed and also decrementing the days until spawn. So when we get to when the days until spawn gets to zero, then we reset it to six and then we return the number of members because each member in this group is now going to cause the spawning of a new fish. So the update method returns the number of fish that should be spawned as a result of this update. And if we haven't reached zero, the time when we do the spawning, then we just decrement days until spawn and return that zero new spawns are to occur. All right, that's the fish cycle group. Now let's return to the fish population class. Uh, let's look at the constructor, the dunder init. I mentioned that we call this with um, a list of the starting days until spawns. And we initialize the cycle groups to an empty list. And then for each of these starting days, we call add, which we're coincidentally going to look at next. Well, to do this grouping, rather than just adding a new fish, I first search in the cycle groups to see if we already have a cycle group for the days until spawn. And if we do find it, then we just add one to it. And that's all we have to do. If we don't find one already, then we need to make a new one. So here we create a new fish cycle group. Um, with a count. So if we say we want to add 10,000, then this is going to be 10,000, and we're going to add a fish cycle group that has 10,000 fish in it. Okay, that's add. Let's look at update. We add one to the day, and we call fish update for every um, actually, this should be probably cycle group update. So let's just fix that while we're here. So we're going to call update on every cycle group in cycle groups. And we're going to sum the results from all those. Remember that update returns the number of new spawns. So we get a sequence of these numbers of new spawns and we sum them up and that gives us num to spawn and then if that's non-zero we add new fish in a group with the time to reproduce set to eight then we just print a nice little message about what's going on. And that's it for update. This was really fun and challenging. And it reminds me that maybe I should think a little bit more at the beginning about, a, about solutions rather than just trying to use the massive power and RAM of my computer. See you next time.